So how did Metaphor sold 1 million copies just minutes after its release? It is altogether different from the roast. Why, it is succulent as a mellow fruit. Another marvel. That will do it. Metaphor Re Fantasio is the most successful game Atlus has ever produced. And that is not a hyperbole. It's the absolute truth. This game surpassed the publisher's all-time record for the fastest game to sell 1 million copies previously held by Persona 3 Reload, which it took a week to reach that milestone. And this feat is not surprising for Metaphor, as the demo alone proved that Metaphor is indeed a genre-defining game. Moreover, its sales figures isn't the only indication for its massive success. Metaphor gained universal acclaim among the critics. It also currently has a 92% approval rate on Steam. Justifying that Studio Zero was keen on patching up the game from the demo to ensure that players will have the best playtime experience upon its release. I mean, in my case, the game is now more optimized and there hasn't been any frame drops. Metaphor also debuted with a huge number of players, despite releasing alongside Dragon Ball Sparking Zero and Silent Hill 2. Then once again surpassing Persona 3 Reload numbers in the all-time peak for Atlus games. So how did Metaphor Re Fantasio reach this overwhelming success? Before that though, if you love playing Metaphor Re Fantasio, then like this video and join Otaka Define for more Metaphor content. Also, while this video contains no spoilers, it will however feature scenes from the start of the tournament up to Martira. So please enjoy. What hell? Is it your Marvel chums? You don't! It's no surprise that Metaphor is simply being dubbed as Persona with a fantasy setting, knowing that this game has been worked on by almost a decade by the trio who created the Persona S Link trilogy. Before it got revealed, Metaphor's working title is named Project Rev Fantasy, since Studio Zero wanted to make a JRPG while taking its roots back to the fantasy setting. Hashino san, the director of Metaphor, voiced his desire to create a game where you kind of go on a journey in a fantasy world. And ever since then, longtime Persona fans waited for it with some sprinkles of doubt and anxiety. Since the trio has been known more for JRPGs on a modern world setting led by high school students, but that did not deter the trio as they proved that they are capable of making a fantasy game proven by its overwhelming success. However, Studio Zero and Altus brand name recognition is not the sole reason for its accomplishment. Since we all know by now that the name of a game studio alone doesn't guarantee that a title will be successful. Just look at other games developed by popular studios that failed to meet expectations both in critical acclaim and sales figures. Even the publishers themselves acknowledge this title's shortcomings. Any studio changing its name doesn't really do much for gamers for a game that is more infuriating than fun. Metaphor, however, is entirely different from this. Well, yes, the game itself is developed by a known studio and it already has a following from a lot of JRPG fans, its success cannot solely be attributed to that. Ashino san, Suejima san, and Megura san, together with the rest of their studio, passionately made a game with the goal of giving their players a different experience. And their desire for change is very much reflected on the game itself. I've said it before that while a lot of people are saying that this game is very much like Persona, that is a shallow description of what metaphor truly is. It is not a Persona game, despite some familiar mechanics. It is not an SMT or other Megaton games despite sharing darker themes. It is an entirely new game born from the creative minds empowered by their passion to change. And metaphor is all about change. Obviously, the fantasy setting alone makes it stand out from the rest of SMT and Persona games, and that is given life with its powerful world building. This is the first time in a long while that I have been so invested in what this fictional world is. To call its world beautiful is not enough, as its world can be described in a myriad of ways. Metaphor didn't just create a shallow fantasy world to stand as a backdrop for its character and story. The world building rivals other successful fantasy franchises, such as using Thomas More's Utopia as an inspiration for the physical look while also diving in its ideology of how can we create a perfect society. Metaphor's various tribes while looking alike with known fantasy races are still very much their own unique interpretation, with each tribe being stereotyped with distinct personalities, worth, 
power, and standing. Because of this, the world has been plagued by unreasonable prejudice. Metaphor, despite being set in a fantasy world, is mired with hatred, distrust, and violence all stemming from discrimination. While yes, games and even other medias have dived into this sensitive topic, Metaphor, on the other hand, did not shy away from it. When I was playing the game, I kept thinking to myself that they won't be able to top this gut-wrenching story about discrimination. And yet, in the next chapter, I am proven wrong. Metaphor has the courage to tackle sensitive topics and presented them without pulling any punches, making sure that players will feel the hatred, distrust, and violence of this fantasy world. And this is exactly how Metaphor is able to hook you to keep playing the game, because it drives the players with a desire to change this bleak world, giving us players the power to make a difference. It's this ideology that made the game strong while also avoiding to be seen as a propaganda, because of how the story is written empowered by driven characters. Now with regards to the characters, all of them are multidimensional, be it if they are part of the main party or followers or important characters, because even minor characters are given personalities that feel like a real person. There are scenes that I sometimes forget I am playing an anime game because of how authentic the characters are portrayed, and Metaphor managed to overcome one of Persona 5's flaws. In P5, one of the criticisms is that when a character's arc is over, then they are sidelined to make room for the newer character. Metaphor isn't like that, since it incorporated both existing and new characters in each arc, keeping both the beats of the characters and story rolling. We rally on Stroll's ideals for nobility despite his disquiet for lacking the power to protect his people. We are mesmerized by Hulkenberg's knighthood even as she struggles to confront her failure. We sympathize for Heisme's misfortunes while admiring his strength to move on despite his apprehension of the past. These are just some characters that Metaphor has, but all of them manage to tell a story far more interesting than other AAA games that released this year. And that's just another reason why this game is so successful. Because we want to see characters achieve their overlong victory while also looking forward to the demise of the despicable villains in the game. Just as how Famitsu stated their review. Metaphor is a game that you won't be able to put down because you will be invested with the happenings of its dark world, the life and struggles of the characters, as well as its fun gameplay, which is another thing to be attributed to the success of Metaphor. This game was able to effectively synthesize the different mechanics of past Atlus games. Whether it's from the overworld combat making farming and dungeon crawling easier for JRPGs, or the addicting turn-based system with robust strategical mechanics of formation, hitting enemy weaknesses by taking advantage of intel before a fight, or the number of archetypes available in the game. Metaphor also managed to encourage players to crawl every corner of a dungeon, as each has great level design while also providing unmissable rewards, like the relics needed to bond with Neuras. And perhaps just fighting the monsters and defeating the boss dungeon is already rewarding in itself. Since aside from their design, they are equipped with deadly skills and tactics that make sure to keep the fight interesting. Now, the true strength of Metaphor's gameplay lies with the Gauntlet Runner. While it is also a plot device to keep the Royal Tournament running, it is also the driving force for the familiar gameplay we know and love from the Persona series, giving players activities to increase the rank of Royal Virtues and bonding with followers. More importantly, the Gauntlet Runner made Studio Zero's long vision realize. Before Persona 5 was created, it was initially going to be a game about traveling around the world, but that idea was changed to what we have today. Metaphor was able to give life on that lost dream, and the runner presented just how beautiful the world is, as we are able to tour the continent and see the breathtaking landscapes. Moreover, this game did a better job in increasing social stats and spending time with the characters, as each royal virtue activity expounded on the lore and story of Metaphor. Like how increasing the tolerance virtue tells us how each tribe was treated so poorly by others. Not to mention increasing the ranks is much easier, especially the later parts of the game gives a massive boost of XP to level up each virtue, making every activity 
feel worth it. Then the bonding mechanic, while restrictive compared to Persona's S-Link system, it however made the story of each follower be told in a more concrete way, allowing the bond to coincide with what is happening in the main story. Because of that, it made each character feel more involved in every story arc. Now, all of this, from the fun gameplay, distinguished fictional world, driven storytelling, and charming characters, all of this would not exist if it weren't for Studio Zero's desire for change. And that is the main reason for the massive success of the game. As the whole idea of metaphor is to change. From giving us the power mechanic to change from one archetype to another, even other party members can change their class. This game is designed to encourage players to change upon acquiring new archetypes, weapons, and even quests. The story is about changing the world into a better place. The gameplay in itself is very much different from past Atlus games while also incorporating its different mechanics. All of this stems from the creator's own desire or change. Even though they are all known from Persona's fame, they prove that they can extend the limits of their talents, illustrating such a wonderful yet cruel world that is inhabited by interesting characters, composing music that echoes the epicness of the story being told, directing such masterpiece and its ability to synthesize every idea and experience they have learned. But let me hear your thoughts. Are you playing Metaphor and are you happy with its success? However, there is one thing I wish the game had and that is a romance option. If you're curious about that, then check this video out. Join Otaka Define for more Metaphor content. This is Math, and stay awesome my dudes. Yannicka, the sound of your wings.